Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here and welcome to Mondays with Mr. Happy, aka Mr. Happy Mondays, the weekly Q&A show where you ask me questions and I answer them. Start off right here at the bottom, videos, that's what we do over on the YouTube side, it's like I'm petting the videos right now. I am recording this week live on Twitch, it's something that's been happening kind of on and off the past few weeks depending on what my schedule is like. With coming back from PAX last weekend, just that wasn't going to happen the way that we wanted to. Sorry for it also being on like Wednesday or Thursday last week. I don't even remember when I eventually got Mondays with Mr. Happy live. But we have fewer questions on the forums probably because of that. And uh, so we'll be taking quite a few more, ex uh, quite a few extra uh, questions on Twitch live this time. Uh, so what did I do this last week? So we got back from PAX. I put up some videos of my thoughts. I still have to release a, a video on my thoughts of World of Final Fantasy and the more recent stuff that we saw from them. Uh, it's quite good. I'm quite happy with the way it looks like World of, Final, World of Final Fantasy is turning out. The standing on top of each other thing is still really weird to me. But as long as the gameplay is good, that's all that really matters. Uh, I released a video for Final Fantasy XV talking about how I'm no longer concerned that game is going to be a flop. Just after having played it for an hour, after having seen some of the things they're introducing, like, like the magic crafting system, I'm, uh, I'm not worried about that. And in other news, I got to go to 2K Studios this last Wednesday. Well, this last Thursday. I, I flew out on Wednesday, but I actually went to 2K Studios on Thursday. And I got to play Bioshock The Collection, which is essentially one to an infinite remastered. I got to play the Xbox One build of the game. And uh, it's Bioshock. I mean, that's honestly my TLDR opinion on it. I made a video on my thoughts on that as well. And I showed some gameplay of it. It's Bioshock with better graphics. Like, if you loved Bioshock, you essentially loved this game. Because it's as good as it ever was. You know what I mean? So, I definitely recommend picking that up. I think that comes out on Tuesday. And at the time of this video releasing, there's a big announcement that I can't make in this video, even though it doesn't come out on Monday because I'm live streaming it on Sunday. Um, but let's just say that it's something I've been really excited for for a long time. And I'll be, I'll be making a video about that thing sometime this week. And finally, in terms of news, before we get to the questions, uh, we have the live letter uh, 32, which is this coming Friday evening at 9.30 p.m. PDT. That's 12.30 a.m. EDT. And then I think that's like 4.30 gmt or some shit like that uh marco's going to be translating again but it's going to be on my channel he doesn't have a stable enough internet to stream it on his so we're going to default to my channel marco will be translating it so we will have a video on that this coming friday we're also expecting a live reaction of the patch trailer because we're expecting that to be this friday as well and i am dying my hair i believe this friday uh because Monday I have Count of Cast, and then Tuesday State of the Realm, so I can't do it those days. Wednesday I have to go to GameStop Expo. I'm going to be the special guest there, and I don't come back till Thursday. So that's out of the question. I can't do Wednesday or Thursday. So Friday is the day that I'm looking to schedule an appointment to dye my hair. The winning color was Blurple. I'm just going to go with blue because I can't tell the difference between blue and purple because that was a joke was. So anyway, uh, on that note, guys, I am going to finally get to the questions. Let's get started. All right, first question. Hey, Haps, you'll probably recognize me, but if not, of course I recognize you. Long time viewer, first time poster. Why do I, f sometimes I just feel like I see these names on the forums, and it's like, <laughs> I just, I, I feel like I've seen them on the forums before, and yet it still says one post. I don't know. Uh, we've even done a couple of VA runs. Yeah, I know, I know who I'm talking to. As a bonus, I have a full stack of new tombstones, the day 3.4 launches, and some donuts to go with your hat coffee. I don't like the donut and coffee thing. The whole, like, the whole cop stereotype of donuts and coffee, it's just disgusting to me. Like, it just doesn't, it doesn't make the donut better. It doesn't make the coffee better. It's, it ruins everything. So two questions with a TLDR just in case. What options are best for dealing with esoterics being retired? As 3.4 approaches, some people are wondering what in the seven hells they should do with SOs. Personally, it's making me slow down and relax, work on other stuff. I wouldn't worry too much about SOs. Like, it's the same way it's always been. You, they, they transfer. Like, if you have 2,000 SOs, it'll probably become like 500 tombstones of lore when you go to transfer it over. So, I mean, if you want to spend SOs, if there's something like you really, really think that you should be spending your SOs on, buy your Umbrites. Like, if you're going to be doing the Relic and you still don't have them all, buy Umbrites. Don't wait for them to change the lore because what was 2,000 Esoterics becomes 500 lore, and the cost of those items is probably still going to be 300 lore. So buying items that are that currently cost Esoterics before, even if you don't need them in the in like right the second, before they're turned into the lore tombstones is the best thing to do with dealing with the retiring of the esoterics. Otherwise, it really, really doesn't matter, in my opinion. Uh, and the TLDR, the second question, what's the deal with lazy paladins? Man, that question though. <laughs> um, I don't think it's a question of what's the deal with lazy paladins. I mean, in general, 
Um, it's easier to notice a paladin kind of being lazy, but there's a lot of jobs. There's a lot of people who play their jobs very lazily. So I don't think I could answer what's the deal. Like, what's the deal with airplane peanuts? Like, I'm not Jerry Seinfeld, unfortunately. Um, and it's just, it's paladin. All right. Like a lot of jobs people play lazily. I don't think it's specific to Paladin. I just think that Paladin gets noticed more because it's a tank. And when you're a tank, there's just more opportunities for people to recognize that you're not doing things correctly. So you just bad luck. <laughs> All right. Question number two. And before I even read it, I'm just going to say there's a chance I may have to vomit in my mouth when I read this question. Only because I can see who it's from. Sup, bruh? If you were to choose between only pl okay, never mind. This is actually a normal question from him without some sort of weird line that he knows I won't read or I don't want to read. If you had to choose only between playing Final Fantasy fourteen or only playing Final Fantasy fifteen, which would you pick? Final Fantasy fourteen because Final Fantasy fifteen is not going to last me two years. Uh, Steam job views, money, etc. should not be a factor. Basically, are you more than more hyped for three point four four point zero Final Fantasy fifteen? I'm more excited. See, like that second question is in no way representative of the first question because being excited for Final Fantasy fifteen has nothing to do with being forced to play it for two years straight you know what i mean um i'm more excited for final fantasy 15 only because it's been 10 years in the making dude like i know that this version of final fantasy 15 hasn't been an active development for th more than three and a half years at this point but like versus 13 since versus 13's announcement it's been 10 years it just i need this in my life so more excited for 15 especially after the recent demo that i got to play and uh but in terms of long term i definitely play final fantasy 14 for the next two years if i had to, if i had to choose between 14 and 15 i would make it only 14 because i could not play just final fantasy 15 for the next two years i think it would just kill me all right next question hey mr happy did you know that zalera is is actually a big fish catchable in game i've heard of that since my first time posting have a zalera thank you for giving me a whole server I, all 12 of you, I'm sure, will love it in your new home. Uh, crafting Alligan and High Alligan weapons and gear were added to the game in 3.2. And Craftable uh, Dreadworm was added in 3.3. .3. However, no Craftable Dreadworm weapons. We know that we'll get new Craftable weapons in 3.4. Most likely I-250. Do you think they might just re... No, I don't think they'll reuse Dreadworm weapons. I think there'll be new weapons altogether. I think that if they're going to do Dreadworm weapons as Craftables, it'll stick to just being a glamour functionality. Um, that being said, do your coil anyway before September 27th so you can get those bonus uh, dialogues with Alice. I don't know what they're going to be. I don't know how important they're going to be, but they brought it up in the live letters. So get coil done before 3.4 so you can get the bonus dialogue. All right, next question. Salutations, Sir Happy, and a beautiful day as well. Have a beautiful day? Is it a beautiful day? I don't know. Your statement confused me. Uh, so ever since Screenix revealed the mobile edition of Final Fantasy XI, have you been worried about the lack of information concerning both the new version development as well as the future of the current Final Fantasy XI? No, because they still send me emails whenever they update Final Fantasy XI, and they, we know they're not doing major development for Final Fantasy XI. It doesn't have a super long-term future. They just kind of are going like, hey, are enough people playing it to make it profitable? Cool, let's make another patch. Like, that's basically how it's going right now. If enough people stop playing it, they'll probably just stop developing content outright. They won't even make it free to play. They'll just shut the whole damn thing down. Uh, no, I don't think they'll pull the plug on 11 unless the mobile version just, just shatters Final Fa the original Final Fantasy XI player base. And just looking at the screenshots, they don't play anything alike. So I don't necessarily see that happening, though I do see Final Fantasy XI, the mobile version, being more successful than Final Fantasy XI, the subversion, whatever. Uh, but anyway, um, and what are the odds screenings would give some sort of compensation for those players in the new 11? No, they're not going to do that. We don't even know. The thing is, the new 11, the one that's on mobile, it looks like it has a stamina system, so it's probably not going to be sub-based. It has nothing to do with the, the mobile version and the console PC version. It's not even console version really anymore because they stopped developing it for the PlayStation 2. Um, they have no connection. Like those, it's not just the the PC version on your phone. It's literally a different game, but it's set in Final Fantasy XI with like all the same story, all the same bosses, the same jobs, everything. Like they want to start it at Chains of Promethea, um, but it has it is in no way connected to the PC version. So no, there's going to be no compensation. I don't see it having a, I don't see it being a sub fee mobile game either. So. We'll see how it turns out, but no, I, I doubt there's going to be any sort of correlation between the Mobile 11 and uh, Final Fantasy 14. All right, next question. Hello. Hi. I guess a few things I should get off my hairy chest. Listen, I'm Italian, so, like, I know. I know that struggle. I feel you, bro. 
One is the quest layout for the Relic Seeking expansion making them job specific, making you go to the same NPC over and over again a bad idea. Are you saying should they make the like one relic can be interchangeable between all the jobs? That would take a. I would. I'd be interested to see how they would do that development wise because that would mean the weapon would have to actively morph every time you change jobs, which I'm not opposed to, I guess. But uh. Making you go to the same NPCs over and over again. See, that's the one I don't understand. I don't think that either of those things that you specifically mentioned are a bad idea. I think it's more like the discussion I had in my recent video where they were talking about the future of Final Fantasy XIV. And they were talking about, like, things that, you know, Yoshi P regrets, things he would have done differently, things they're planning for 4.0, you know breaking the cycle of what is standard for Final Fantasy XIV, but at the same time keeping what is consistent that comes with those cycles. And it was just that they seem to go from one extreme to the other there's never an in-between with them oh it's too it's too easy let's make it fucking stupid hard oh it's too hard let's make it stupid easy it's like it seems like they're unable to kind of reach a middle ground so when they go oh these raids you know super difficult you know and probably time consuming so if we're going to make something that isn't difficult it needs to match the difficulty and add into the and add in even more time consumption as opposed to saying well let's make something that's moderately difficult and yes we make it a, we make it a little longer than what we anticipate would take to get a, to get a weapon from the raids if you were adequately skilled and just make it something that's not very skilled it's just they seem to just jump from one end to the other and i think that's really where the poor ideas come from um, let's see. Two, is the holiday game season looking good? Well, let's name a few things. Uh, let's see. Dishonored 2, Pokemon Sun and Moon, Final Fantasy 15, Kingdom Hearts 2.8, uh, World of Final Fantasy. There's, uh, ReCore, I think, comes out Tuesday, which looks phenomenal. I got to, it, it was kind of weird to play when I got to play it at, uh, at PAX West, but I only played it for, like, ten minutes before I, like, realized I should be at the Final Fantasy 15 booth. Um, Persona 5 out in Japan, uh, if you want to count that. Otherwise, then the early next year, quarter one, we know we have uh, Final Fantasy 12, Zodiac Age. We have Horizon Zero Dawn. That's another one. Um, we have The Last Guardian, I believe, that comes out this holiday season as well. Um, Jesus, man, I can't even keep track of all the games that are coming out this holiday season. Yes, it's going to be friggin' ridiculous. And 3 is 14 in a good place at the end of, uh, well, first of all, we're not at the end. We still have two major patches left before the end of the expansion, but I think that Heaven's Ward was even more of a learning curve than A Realm Reborn was, and I'm hoping to see some improvements in 4.0 in terms of where they place their development and how they, um, add new features into the game, uh, not just kind of taking the chance to be like, hey, here's this fucking thing that we have no idea if you'll like it, but we really hope so because we spent a lot of time and effort on it, and then it just falls through like Lords of Verminion and Diadem. So hopefully they, uh, hopefully they just, they, they manage to shake things up a little bit with the expansion. In terms of continuing a Realm Reborn's formula, it did mostly an okay job, minus the raid scene where they kind of shattered it with going all with Savage, just like I said, being way too much of a, uh, of a difficult fight for the majority of the player base. It doesn't need to be beatable by everyone, but it needs to be something that's a reasonable expectation that your players could uh, accomplish. All right, next question. Sup, Haps, thank you for giving me tips for the Machinist opener last week. It worked out fine and still doing my own opener, but my cooldown different, tell me. My DPS is pretty good. I have 2,000, and you have, oh, so you want me to have 2,000 tomes of scripts, okay. I have another small question for Machinist. I made my relic with 120 crit, 115 depth, five skill speed. That is the correct thing. Um, lose the debt. No, don't go full crit and skill speed. So, uh, Bard, you would go crit spell speed. I'm sorry, crit s skill speed. I keep trying to say the word spell. Crit skill speed would be on the Bard Relic. The Machinist Relic doesn't really benefit from the skill speed as much. Bard he has a lot more cast times and therefore benefits from the skill speed a bit more outside of just the flat reduction in the cooldown time. Whereas Machinist has a lot of instant casts, so the skill speed to get your abilities off a little bit faster isn't as valuable, and getting your abilities back faster really isn't that valuable. There's no there's no reasonable breakpoint you're going to hit without something crazy like an arrow from an Astrologian that lets you get an extra GCD in a wildfire. And since there's none of those breakpoints, that skill speed is definitely not worth going for. It looks stupid to have that 5 skill speed on there, but you made the right choice with your Relic. All right, next question. Quick and simple question. Why, hello to you too, great question asker. Do you think they will increase the armory XP bonus for 50 plus? I do. In the expansion, I do think that it's going to go even above 100%. Um, I know it's ridiculous to think it could go even faster, but I really think that they don't want people thinking they don't want the lower levels to go any faster. I definitely think that's below 60 post-expansion. 
that 1 to 60 will have a 100% bonus, but I think 1 to 50 may have like a 150% bonus at this point. I just don't expect them to leave it as is. I expect it to get some level of increase, but it's not going to be anytime soon. We're not talking about to like May or June of next year. All right, question number seven. Hey, Haps. Hey. Hope you're doing good, my man. I am. Anyway, simple question for you this week. After watching State of the Realm, you mentioned how you wanted to keep your raid gear and for it to be upgraded. There's talk about introducing a relic armor to go along with a relic weapon. Do you think this approach could work for the raid scene? Where you have a piece of armor you collect while doing the initial run of a new raid, then you get the next tier of raid armor you need to upgrade. So, I'm I'm okay with that idea. With essentially being, hey, here's, this, here's, here's a piece of armor that we're going to give you. And if you actively raid, it will actively increase in power. That is okay by my standards, by what I would like to see, a piece that stays with you, a piece that feels good to, to progress in. And then it also kind of gets people interested in doing the old raids slightly. The problem is they would never do it that way, and I wouldn't honestly expect them to do it that way. If they're going to do it in a relic armor that's alongside the relic weapon, it's not going to be something that has anything to do with the raids at all. It's going to be essentially another anima weapon where you need to do these crazy grinds that aren't very skill oriented and that's how you obtain it um i am still okay with the with the idea that you're kind of proposing when i interpret it the way that i would want it but that's not the way that square enix would incorporate it into the game in the first place and i think it's important to realize that it needs to follow the theme of the relic quest line of the anima quest line otherwise it's not really anima or relic armor in the first place um but maybe they'll do something one day to extend the life of gear. Um, something to at least make me happy that I collected it prior instead of me just going and buying a bunch of crafted gear the day of the patch. I'll see you in 3.4 i250 crafted gear. I'll see you then. All right, question number eight. I just won't have a spark for a question roulette. Oh, Haps, I'm so sorry. Okay, I see who it is who's asking. Usually I get the question roulette. What are you doing with ninjas who just won't dancing edge? Sad face. I guess it depends on the scenario. Like, if you're talking about, hey, it's a four-man group. It's Paladin, Black Mage, White Mage, Ninja. And the Ninja just doesn't Dancing Edge. That Ninja doesn't understand how to play their job. Now, if it's Warrior, Ninja, Black Mage, White Mage, then that Warrior is the one who's supposed to be responsible. Just remember that. Don't be like, hey. Now, it's one thing if you're like, hey, there's a part coming up where I can't have it up. Can you Dancing Edge at that part? That level of communication is very healthy. Warriors and ninjas in raid groups should have that level of communication. Hey, Happy, can you Dancing Edge coming up because I need to make sure Path is up first and it's just after a transition? I'll go, sure, absolutely. That'll be the first thing I do because I'm not waiting six GCDs for the slashing debuff when I could just use three of my own. So um, that's just, an, you know, what are you doing with ninjas? You know what I do? I, I, you know what? The same thing I do when I tell them not to single target Doton. Don't Doton on single fucking targets. And also... Don't DPS without Dancing Edge. There you go. STDs and and uh, no DEs. NDEs. Some words. Yeah. All right. Question number nine. Hello, Mr. Happy. I hope you had a great time at PAX. I did indeed, especially on Sunday. I got to see a lot of friends and peoples and, and people who watch the stream and the YouTube channel and all the good things. Have some new 3.4 tomes. Good. I'm going to need those. Here are my questions for the week. What are you doing first in 3.4? You know, that's a good question. So... Uh, I'm actually going to check my Skype group because I, 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 you're reminding me that I should maybe check what the plans are for the next couple of days. Um, that's fine because my Skype is not super, super busy. Okay. But anyway, so um, I think the current plan is to do all of Alexander the Creator normal, do A9 Savage, which I will be streaming. Uh, we're hoping to beat that day one, uh, even though we're like a more casual group than, you know, we're, we're made up of players who have done world progression, but we're playing a lot more casually, and I know I'm playing fucking Machinist, which I'm god-awful at. So, hopefully we can get past A9 Savage day one, and then we'll probably do Sophia after that, and then at that point it's up to my leisure. I'll probably, then I'll go do the main story, I'll go do the dungeons, all that other stuff, because I want to have plenty to talk about on Stay of the Realm that night, but I have a feeling it's going to be a... <laughs> I'm going to have primarily have had one experience by the time State of the Realm rolls around. Especially with TwitchCon that coming weekend. It's going to be rough, man. I mean, no matter what, I knew that this patch was going to come at a time that was really bad. I was really hoping it was going to be the 20th. So I would have 10 days before TwitchCon to play the patch. It's only I essentially only have two or three days to play it before TwitchCon. And even then, I'm probably going to be streaming it from TwitchCon. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm just hoping that 3.4 goes well. 
I've been following the debate about raid difficulty on the official forums. While interesting, I did not see much about getting casual players tools to train themselves for raids. I think Stone Sky C was a great idea, but it's not enough. So, here's my belief. My belief is that you need to create a platform, not a tool, for players to improve upon. So, what I mean by that is, a middle-tier raid like Coil was a platform. It wasn't a tool, but it was a platform in which when players went in there, they didn't need to be flawless, but there was some degree of improvement that they didn't have before they went in there. That is what is most important. And whatever, whether they wanted to keep improving after that and do speed kills or whatever, you know, th th that was up to them at that point. If they wanted to be that kind of player, if they just wanted to be adequate enough to beat Coil. The problem is we don't have a platform right now for people to learn upon. You can't use Extreme Primals, and even then, Looking at Extreme Primals, looking at Savage, there's still no good stepping stone to go from any other content into an Extreme Primal. There's just no build. It's essentially like you're walking up a staircase, but the stairs, the staircase stops two steps in, but you can see another step about like 20 feet above you. You just can't reach it in any way. And I think that that's more important. It's not about giving them tools. It's about giving them a platform upon which they can improve themselves. People also have to care. A lot of people simply just don't care about improving their play. And those people you're never going to get through to. So don't worry about them. Uh, three, what should I buy from the market board before 3.4? I don't want to say anything definitively. I think Ash would have a better answer to that question, who I know is in my chat right now, by the way. Um, he's been keeping grade 2 dissolvents I don't think he's been buying them I could be wrong he's just been keeping any grade 2 dissolvents he gets in anticipation of new crafting recipes um, also I would make sure to try and save up as much lore and essos as possible because odds are new crafting materials are going to be bought with lore tome stones so as many, the more you have the better off you're going to be three uh four and what are you planning on planning other any other MMOs besides 14 so let's see what am I looking at Chronicles of Illyria Crowfall I feel like there was one more on that list, but Chronicles of Illyria and Crowfall are really the big two that come to mind. Uh, I'm going to be checking those out at some point or another. All right, question number 10. I think there's one more question on the forums after this, and then it'll be a uh, question from the live Twitch chat. I also didn't check for video questions, which I should do while I'm answering this one. Uh, do, do, do. Why do it in between and edit it out when I can just do it live and you guys can be like, what the heck is he doing? No, okay, there's no video questions. All right, anyway, hey, Mr. Happy. First time asker here, so I have a bonus of a Dragoon that actually shows up to Steps of Faith. I thought you were going to say a Dragoon that doesn't die, which is, I guess, if you, I guess showing up at least shows that you care. Uh, here's my question. A lot of people are complaining about how repetitive collecting Tombstones is getting. Do you think Square will change the way we get gear next expansion or stick to the same formula? So a lot of times what I see is essentially people say, okay, Tombstones. They're pretty much a necessary evil in any modern MMO because people need people who have little time to play need to know that there's a sense of progression being made. Um, so no, I don't expect tombstones to go anywhere in the expansion. That being said, I think most people sort of say, "Hey, can we get rid of tombstones?" without really giving a reasonable thing in its as an alternative because you have to remember that yes, while the hardcore players absolutely collect tombstones, yes, pretty much every player at level 60 is collecting tombstones. The thing is they're there for a reason it's kind of like the animal weapon the animal weapons there for people who want a raid equivalent weapon but don't want to put in the effort or don't have the time to learn a raid or to beat a raid so instead they can take a little bit of time every now and again they can work towards a weapon odds are that player is not someone who's trying to be crazy good at all the jobs they're not a player who's playing 16 hours a day they're a player who gets a few nights a week a few hours and it encourages them to basically go hey i'll do my expert i'll do my 60 i'll hop into weeping city i'll take any tome zones i get and i'll put it towards this um and i think that's kind of where it's going to stay it's a matter of it's a, that's that's not where kind of the issue lies the issue kind of lies in there is one of only pretty much two or three options in order to obtain weapons and gear so it's more about increasing options and not about replacing tombstones in a sense Okay, so this next one is a spoiler question about King's Glaive. So if you haven't seen it, what I do, I'll, I'll, I'll cover it in the question. All right, and the final question that's over on the forums is a King's Glaive question. It looks like, hi, Happy, Final Fantasy 15 King's Glaive question. I'm not sure if this is a spoiler, but read ahead in case. So what I do, I haven't had to do this for a really long time. What I do is I do a thumbs up, and when I do the thumbs up, it means spoiler start. When I thumbs up again, it means spoiler stop. So you can either, you can just basically mute the video, skip ahead, whatever it is, and uh, hopefully that works. Just mute the video, let it play, and hopefully we'll have the answer. So, spoiler start. Let's click show. Finished watching King's Glaive a few weeks ago. I was curious, with your time with 15 from demos and stuff, do you see the game going back to the characters in the movie? I want to see Nyx and Libertus in there. 
So there are two characters from the movie that are very clearly going to be reappearing. If you've seen the entire thing, you know what I'm talking about. There's one character who is likely gone forever, but he'll probably be referenced at some point in Final Fantasy XV. I will say this, one of my favorite aspects about now having seen Kingsglaive, seen most of well, what bro episodes of Brotherhood we have out so far, and having played that, that first hour of Final Fantasy XV, I will say that it has culminated into an immensely more entertaining first hour of the game. There are story cutscenes that haven't been shown on the internet, or that haven't been uh, showed by Square Enix at the very least. Maybe somebody doubt, like recorded them and put them up on the internet and just for whatever reason. And there's about five or six minutes of cutscenes that aren't shown that have a much, that sort of make me appreciate Kingsglaive and Brotherhood a lot more. It shows kind of the connection of the characters and what this, um, what this sort of storyline means to them. So I'm actually very confident that Final Fantasy 15 will have a story for the ages when it comes to when it comes to referring to Final Fantasy stories. I've I have a fairly strong feeling regarding that. And that is the final question. Uh, let me close this and then do the to return the spoilers. There you go. Spoilers now done. So on that note, everyone, I'm now going to start taking questions from the live Twitch chat. Remember, these do not need to be Final Fantasy related. They do not need to be Final Fantasy 14 related. They do not need to be Square Enix related. As long as they are semi-appropriate questions that are not completely off the wall, then I will probably answer them. Um, <laughs> and my girlfriend, while I'm recording this, just typed in the chat, Hey, sexy, when you are done, we have Indian food. So now that my, so now that my, uh, my self-confidence has been increased, ladies and gentlemen, ask away. All right, the first question we have from the Twitch chat. Hey, Haps, what do you think about in the X-Pack them giving us another platform for middle core rating? So you're not actually asking for a third difficulty. You're asking for, like I was talking about before, an actual platform that is somewhere between the difficulty of normal and savage. I think that that's kind of, they have to. Like, that has to be a number one priority. That's not something they can say, hey, we'll add a fucking another thing like the mentor roulette. We'll add more Stone Sky Sea dummies. Like, that's not, those aren't platforms, in my opinion. They need, that needs to be a number one priority is for them to add another middle core platform for people to improve upon. It doesn't need to be a raid. It doesn't, it could, it could even just be a more difficult formans. It could be things like, I don't know, like a deep dungeon that's like not as, no, nah, that's kind of stupid. I, I don't know. I don't have any good ideas. And that's a problem. A lot of people who suggest these ideas, get rid of tombstones, get rid of this, get rid of that myself included i a lot of us just don't have a good solution otherwise we just know what we want we don't know how we want it so i i am guilty of that in this case if it's going to be a platform that's not rating it needs to be something that gets you to improve like reasonably not just something that you'll get through and then throw all that knowledge out the window it needs to be a learning experience so um that's well that's my answer to the question all right, next question. Hey, Haps, has your opinion on any Final Fantasy game you've played during your count up changed from what you thought beforehand? So Final Fantasy IX, my, my, my opinion has improved, minus that stupid stealing mechanic. But um, I'd say that it's not so much that my opinions on Final Fantasy games have changed. Um, I rem a lot of them are very similar to the way I remember them. I'd say Final Fantasy III for, is just, I don't know, way worse now for me than it was before. Like, I, I played it last year. And then I played it again in Count Up, and I was like, this is a lot worse than I remember Final Fantasy III being. And I'm only talking about a year ago, the same exact version. So I don't know, man. It's Final Fantasy III is definitely, and I'm talking about, and for any of you fucking people who are going to say, yo, do you mean 6 or do you mean 3? I mean 3. Like, it, the, it's 1 through 15 now, guys. Like, there's no 1 is 1 and 2 is 4 and 3 is 6. That's not a thing anymore, okay? No. I mean 3, just, no. But 9 has improved my my opinions of nine have improved over um when i was younger 12 i'm playing right now still pretty much the same still not super thrilling i don't mind grinding i like certain aspects but it's still i'm waiting for zodiac age to really push me to the limits when it comes to final fantasy 12. all right next question uh what do you think of the playstation 4 pro and will you get it so i have a rule with buying uh consoles so if it is essentially not going to vastly improve or there's like a big game that i'm excited for that's locked behind it i'm pretty much not gonna buy it i want to put this out there when I, I said earlier i've been waiting for 10 years for final fantasy 15. i would like to point out i bought my ps3 ps3 that i am sitting right there i still have it 
I got that because I saw the trailer for Versus 13 and 13, and I thought Kingdom Hearts 3 was going to come out on as well. And there's like, oh man, those three games, plus I'm sure there's a ton of other games. Disappointed, 15 did not hit my PlayStation 3. PlayStation 4 comes out. We get confirmation that 15 is going to be on the PlayStation 4, that Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to be on the PlayStation 4. I'm like, great, I have the console. And now there's the PlayStation 4 Pro coming out, and it's like, well, it's going to have the same games, but it'll support 4K resolution. First of all, don't have a 4K TV. Second of all, don't care to get a 4K TV. Third of all, is it really going to be that much better? I'm afraid that it might be, like in terms of just like frame rate or anything like that. So I'm not getting a PlayStation 4 Pro unless somebody buys it for me. Because <laughs> that's like, that's, that's just, that's the stance I'm taking on it. I, no, mm -mm, not doing it. All right, next question. Do you think solo players have a place in MMOs? I've seen people actually complain they got another solo player in the roulette. But with things like Deep Dungeon, it seems SE is catering to them at least. So it's, it's a really tough line. There's, if you, you have to respect that if you are a solo player, you are locking yourself out of the full potential of the game. It's, the problem is, is when solo players go, there should be everything that's in the game for everyone, I should also be able to do alone. That I don't agree with. I don't think there's a place for those kind of solo players in an MMO, unless an MMO is designed that way. Um, that being said, Square Enix is catering to challenging players who want to play solo. Um, with things like Pals of the Dead, I don't think they're necessarily catering to solo players overall. They're just ca they're just making sure that it's not overly inaccessible if you're someone who doesn't have friends to play with. And they're adding a few features that if you are someone who plays the game solo, you can challenge yourself more so than you normally would be able to do. Next question, what do you think they could do to get more people PvPing? I think the biggest issue, and I think I discussed this recently on stream, whenever they release a new fucking map, in Final Fantasy 14 for PvP. They make a new mount that you can only get from PvPing on that map. Stop doing that. Like seriously, that murders the queues for every other map. Nobody cares anymore about the old map, especially the people who already got the mount from the old map. Here's what you do. Every time you release a new map, add a, a seasonal achievement. Essentially consider it a battleground or a frontline season. And don't make it competitive, don't make it, like, if you want to add rank, if you want to just post the rankings for that season, whatever, don't make it something that people seriously compete for. But if you're going to do that whole mount thing, please just make it so that you need to PvP X amount for fucking three and a half months. Like, it creates a short window where players can only obtain the mount if they're actively PvPing in that window, and you're already adding items that are PvP season specific, so you've already begun doing that. And it's like, you know what, now I'm just going to queue in a frontline roulette, because whatever I get is all going to count. If we win, that's all that matters. Oh, I got to win 200 matches to get this mount? Doesn't matter which one it's in? Do that. Second of all, PvP just needs to be better. <laughs> There needs to be more maps, there needs to be more unique modes. A lot of the modes are very similar, and they need to stop making a map a mode. World of Warcraft does that, and I don't entirely agree with that decision. Certain things, yes, it's understandable. Like, if you're doing Capture the Flag, absolutely. There's, It's really hard to repurpose a map from Capture the Flag, because you have a base on one end, you have a base on the other end, and the goal is to go to the other base. Like, if that map is used for anything other than, like, Deathmatch, essentially, it's kind of difficult. I don't think Final Fantasy XIV maps have that sort of problem where the maps have to be used for just one thing um for example make a new pvp a, a new um a new feast arena and make it just take the center of Cartno flats like just the top section where people go to the fight in the middle and just add a few walls barriers or something there make that a new map go to gra go grab a little section of uh, of seas go grab a little section of shatter make uh, make arena maps out of that. You already have essentially what you need to do that. You just need to be able to pull specifically that area. It creates more diversity. It creates, um, and that honestly, diversity in just the maps alone gets more people PvPing. Seeing the same map over and over again. And for the love of God, the number one thing, get rid of grand company restrictions. That is the number one thing. You do that, it's better. End of story. All right, next question. Uh, hey, Mr. Happy, have you thought of trying Legion? I'm kind of surprised how much I like it. I feel like it is a few features 14 can learn from. So I definitely feel like Legion is, at, for now, done a good job. I mean, we all loved Heaven's Ward when it first came out too, and Legion is kind of still in that honeymoon phase. So here are the things I like about Legion. I like the Mythic Dungeon concept. I like just like the way that that content is done. 
and their raids have always been large and fantastic and uh, connected, which is something I wish Final Fantasy XIV would do instead of sectioning it off into like four different instances. Um, there's also more bosses and there's a shit ton more difficulty, so anybody at any skill level can essentially participate in the content. As much as that's been kind of ridiculed in World of Warcraft, oh, you know, there's all these difficulties now. No one feels the need to improve, they just do the difficulty they do all the time. That's not entirely true. I mean, like I said, you need a stepping stone, but you need to also want to push yourself up to the next step. Blizzard also has uh, probably a thousand times more resources than Final Fantasy XIV does. They have a little bit more leisure when it comes to doing these things. And Final Fantasy XIV won't... They, they refuse to say, hey, we're going to not produce content for the next 14 months so we can make our next expansion spectacular at the start. They say, let's just keep releasing steady content every three, three and a half months. Um, steady content is definitely the number one thing that MMOs promise that they don't deliver on, including World of Warcraft. Let's be the MMO that's known for that. Um, I don't like the artifacts in Legion. I don't like them any more than I like the fucking, than I'd like the Zodiac weapons in fucking Final Fantasy XIV. Essentially, all they did is they said, hey, every, every expansion, we take your skill tree and we do something to it. We make it not a tree. We make it a choice of three every 10 levels, whatever. This expansion, your levels will just, whatever, fuck it, who cares? It's all about that weapon. You need to be powering up that weapon. That's where your skill tree is now. That's where your upgrades are now. They essentially just took the idea of getting a new skill when you level up and getting a new weapon and combine them into one. And I've already started seeing complaints about the artifact weapon essentially being a giant grind fest. And, like, that's what it is in Final Fantasy XIV. That's what it is in World of Warcraft too. Just because you get those knowledge levels every now and again, you need millions upon millions of artifact points in order to finish that thing. And we all know how people get when it takes forever to finish a single objective. Even if you don't need it, eventually when the raids come out, when people are actively raiding, people are going to be like, well, come on. I want to, I want to, you know, I want to raid, but these people are telling me I need more artifact points because my weapon's not upgraded enough. It's, I'm not, I, it's got its pros, it's got its cons. I think that's ultimately the best way for me to say it. But I do agree, Legion did a good job. The reason why I'm not playing Legion, I can't give it the right time. And I feel like, as someone who's always on the fence about World of Warcraft, I'm like, I'm not someone who's always looking to bash it, but I'm not someone who's ever looking to defend its decisions. I'm always looking at them, scrutinizing them under a magnifying glass. And I feel that as someone who is like that, for me to stream Legion, I need to be invested in it. I need to say, hey, this time I'm going to spend playing Legion is not time I'm going to resent later. First of all, as a broadcaster, fucking so many people are streaming it. I'm going to get lost in a sea of broadcasters. And as a broadcaster, I have to make that a consideration. That can't be something I don't consider. Two, it's just kind of not a fun stream to watch if I'm not 100% invested. I think Black Desert Online was a good example of that, where I went in going, you know, I want this to be good. I don't have high hopes. And it just, it showed not having high hopes the whole time. Just, it, it kind of, it, I had a lot of viewers that day, but it was miserable, to be honest. And finally, and it's kind of a culmination of the first two, if I'm not going to give it the time I, that it deserves for me to fairly judge it, then I shouldn't give it time at all. Not because it's not good, but because it's not fair as a somebody who judges games it's not fair to people who listen to my opinion it's not fair for anyone and honestly it's a little embarrassing on my end if i were to do it so that's why i'm not playing legion all right next question uh hey mr happy if we get swimming in 4.0 do you think we'll get diving for the love of fucking god i don't want swimming like it's it i agree that it kind of sucks that there's places with water that we just can't go because we don't have swimming in the game but i've just swimming sucks in, in games. I'm not going to say in MMO. It just sucks in games. Unless it's literally a game built for underwater play. It is just the history of water in games. is just awful. <laughs> like since the Nintendo days. Water has just been a shitty thing. And I do not want it in Final Fantasy XIV. I'm okay with like sailing. For example. Like, like content that takes place in and around the ocean. But not like literal like swimming, diving, and underwater combat. I fucking hate it. And I just don't want it. <laughs> Alright, next question. Would you recommend Final Fantasy XIV to someone who's thinking of trying it out? So that's a really generic question. I get that during stream a lot. I don't usually get that during Mondays with Mr. Happy very often. And I always have a hard time answering it because the answer is not no and it's not yes. The answer is I don't know if I don't know you as a gamer. 
I can't give you a reasonable answer. Can I tell you that me as a gamer, would I recommend it? Yeah, I would recommend it. Why? Because I like it. Because I like leveling. I like MMOs. I like Final Fantasy. I like dungeons. I like raids. You know, I like the things that are in the game. But the way they're executed is not necessarily indicative of the way that somebody else perceives it. Like, some people say, oh, the combat's too slow. I go, I don't think it is. I just think that early game, it reminds me a lot of early game in like the other final, in like other Final Fantasy games where essentially have very few attacks to choose from. And it's every two and a half seconds, for example. You know, I interpret it in a completely different light. And then I know that, hey, later in the game, I have all these options. I have these intricate combos that I have to learn. You know, I know I have to learn the boss fights i have to learn how to move around the fights and to me that's a very interesting thing to learn whereas other people go i just want you know over and over again and that's how they have fun you know they have fun pressing three or four buttons over and over again and murdering bosses with big dick numbers you know it just depends on who you are and they want to hit faster because you know the faster you hit the more satisfying it is giggity so that's just the way it is um so that being said I need to learn more about an individual before I can fairly recommend it because I will give you a biased opinion every time for that question. If you want a biased opinion, play it. All right, and I think the last question we're going to take for Mondays with Mr. Happy right now, uh, has there been any games outside of Final Fantasy XIV that piqued your interest that you would have liked to have streamed or played but for whatever reason were not able to? So that happens a lot believe it or not a great example bioshock comes out this week will i play it probably not why because if i stream it and i put videos up on it probably won't see much traction um and that's usually a good reason a lot of the time i don't spend too much time gaming outside of the broadcast any gaming i do i like to share that experience on youtube or on twitch because i mean that's what my career is you know what i mean that's how i earn my living is sharing my experiences sharing my thoughts giving tips giving advice you know kind of getting together and playing a game with a friend kind of thing that's how i earn my living so doing it kind of in my own time when i could do other things like i could spend time with mel or we could watch movies together we could go out to eat we can go have drinks with friends you know I, i'd rather either if i'm not using the time to work i'd rather not use it to just play video games unless it's something that i'm preparing for the stream um what's another game that recently uh came out neo i wanted to play the neo beta, beta so bad never got around to it because i was in the middle of between well between packs and between um count up and having to get certain things ready and wanting to get back into final fantasy 14 that i never made the time to play it and then going to 2k was pretty much the nail in the coffin there because it ended september 6th couldn't download it after september 6th so yeah there's tons of games that i end up wanting to play destiny i really wanted to play and i really wanted to produce content on um the mobile games like grandmasters and brave x face and movies those actually i actually have a different reason for not being able to play those whatever emulators i'm using like nox blue Stacks, they all play mobius like shit <laughs> i so, thank you to the guy who helped me get it working on nox but it just runs like ass and i think i need to put more ram or cpu power into it or something i don't know i have it on like the highest possible fucking settings for everything and it's copying a different tablet and maybe it needs to copy a different tablet i don't know um and there's other games and then there's just games that don't match my brand like fucking i i find like party games fucking hilarious like wwe games are fucking hilarious but you'll never see me play one of those because they're off brand technically so yeah there's there's a lot there's a fucking lot um one game that i've actually rather enjoyed especially shoutcasting it is rocket league i actually have been meaning to post um a rocket league shoutcast that i did a few weeks back just for fun uh post it on youtube because i had a good time with it and in the end, I just want to be able to play games I enjoy, that I can educate on, that I can experience, and that I can share that experience with you guys. Um, it's it's what I want to be able to do, and even if I'm interested in something, a lot of the times my interest in that game just doesn't align with what the stream wants to see or what matches the brand that Mr. Happy Gaming has developed itself into. Unfortunately, that's my fault a lot because I developed the brand into something that was so Final Fantasy XIV centric, it makes it hard to branch out into other things. And I really am grateful for any core audience that watches whatever videos I post. You know, they go, oh, Mr. Happy posted a video, let me see what it is. Not, hey, why the fuck is Mr. Happy posting a video that's not Final Fantasy XIV? What the fuck? What are you doing, piece of shit? Like, I... <laughs> 
<laughs> that happens more than you think, believe it or not. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, the way that it goes with that one. So that's going to be it. I'm going to wrap things up with uh, Mondays with Mr. Happy for now so I can get this edited, get it rendered, and all that funky stuff. So uh, I, what I do here at the end, for those of you who are watching live on Twitch, is I do a separate goodbye on YouTube, and then I hang out for like a minute, like two to five minutes after that on Twitch to like wrap a few things up. We host someone and then we go things. But this is a goodbye just for YouTube. Uh, videos here at the bottom, whatever videos I managed to actually get posted this last week, they should be down there. Should be quite a few of them. Um, but anyway, yeah, thank you for asking your questions this week. Be sure to ask your questions in the description of the video over on YouTube. Go to the Dream Network forums or send a video question in to the email that's down there. If you're here on Twitch every Sunday, I try to do this every Sunday where I answer the questions live. So definitely, um, if you want to ask the questions live, usually around 2 p.m. Pacific is when I do that. Uh, you just wait till after I'm done with the forum questions, essentially. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it. I'll see you guys on YouTube next week for the next Monday's with Mr. Happy and on Twitch. Let's wrap things up separately. Anyway, everyone on YouTube, take care.